Hey, how's it going? My name's Alex, and today it's raining outside, and I'm doing a restart, but we're gonna talk about how do you get paid. Okay, so first and foremost, you guys gotta consider that trucking is no different than any other business, and that is that you uh, provide a service, and then you invoice, the customer based on the services you just provided, right? And the question is, how long do you want to wait before you get paid from that customer, right? So depending on what your agreement is with that customer, that'll determine how long you have to wait for your money. So for example, I have customers that reach out to me and there is option number one, that is COD, which is cash on delivery. And that is usually the quickest way of getting paid because right when you deliver right then and there on the spot, you're getting paid, which is awesome. The second way is net seven, net 30 or whatever, like net something, right? And that that number is how many days it's gonna take before that customer has to pay you before you can start you know, doing late charges or put that bill into collections, right? So net seven is very rare, doesn't happen often. Um, that's a, one of those things uh, that's available. Um, net 30 is also a more common option for sure in the you know trucking business. And there's obviously even companies that do net 60 and net 90. So there's companies that take 90 days to pay. Those those are definitely ones you don't want to work with because any company that takes that long, uh, maybe their money isn't so good and they're going to close down and then you'll be really out of luck. But the more most important part is, you know, that those are basically your options, you know, um, you know, without like without overcomplicating it. Right. So you as the truck driver provide or as a transporter provide the service to your customer and then you like in your terms, you write down whatever the payment agreement is. Now, here's where it gets a little more complex, right? So then there's a broker involved, right? And the broker is the middleman to the customer, right? So before it was just you and the customer, now there's a broker involved, right? And the broker says, I'm net 30, right? Now you don't know what the terms are between the broker and the customer. Maybe their terms are net seven or COD or something or whatever the case may be, or prepayment. There's actually prepayment as well. Totally forgot to mention that one. But so you don't know what the terms between the broker and the customer are. You only know the terms between you and the broker. And so let's say for example, the broker is net 30, um, then you're gonna have to wait 30 days to get paid from that broker, right? So now there's gonna be even another person in the middle or another company as serving as a middleman and this is the most common thing which is a factoring company and what a factoring company does is they pay you the next day or within two days or whatever the terms are and they take a small percentage right so for example you just delivered a load for a broker and the broker is net 30 and that means you're gonna have to wait 30 days but instead of invoicing the broker you send your invoice to the factoring company and they pay you the next day and then they wait the 30 days to get collected to collect that money from the broker and so the factoring company basically is like a bank that are they kind of serve as a bank that they just have a ton of cash and they just pay you and then they wait 30 days for that money right Right? And so, but for that service, they charge anywhere between, I mean, it depends on volumes. It depends on how much revenue you're doing per month, anywhere between like a percentage and 4% of the amount of the invoice amount. But that's not all, okay? <laughs> not to sound like an infomercial salesperson, but, but that's not all. <laughs> so there's actually a factoring company between the customer and the broker as well. So now how the load gets cut down or how the load works essentially is the shipper, uh, or the, you transported the load, let's start on this side, right? You transported a load, you invoiced to your factoring company, they paid you right away, the factoring company waits to get collected from the broker um, and, and the broker wants to take his percentage right away and so he sends it to his factoring company so that he could pay his, your factoring company so the broker gets it the next day when you deliver and then that factoring company waits to collect from the shipper another 30 or 60 or 90 days or whatever the case may be right and so um, really the factoring companies they're you know they're getting more and more involved 
it, like you, you know because they're the ones advancing all the money uh, and you know really when you think about how much volume factoring companies do I'm sure they're making out really really well so just to quickly recap your options there's prepayment there's cash on deliveries and then there's you know um, some kind of delayed pay and then there's a uh, payment uh, through a factoring company so those really are your four options and how you get paid now to give you an idea of how quickly this can spiral out of control when you don't factor and then how I, you have to chase down your money is I I just I've been waiting for this broker that my factoring company did not use and what they said was uh, Alex this this company has a bad credit rating so we can't factor them you have to invoice them direct I think to myself I'm like how bad can it be right I mean okay fine their credit is not good how long are they possibly gonna take to pay and let me tell you, I am never working with that company ever again, okay? And the reason I say that is because I had to hire my wife, hire my wife. Uh, I, I asked her, I'm like, hey, can you just follow up with them? Ask them like when they're gonna pay. And, and she asked them, she was like, hey, when are you guys gonna pay? And they're like, well, we never got these invoices. And she was like, uh, yes, we sent them over uh, several times now. And basically their system automatically blocks anything that's over 10 10 megabytes or so so it automatically blocks their email from receiving that right so my wife had to like ask them like okay well how else can we send it and and uh, like weeks and weeks are going by it, like we're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and you know eventually my wife got fed up and so she was like you know what how can I mail you these darn invoices and this paperwork and my wife overnighted it to them and they got it and they finally finally oh my goodness finally they paid us out and we, we've been waiting for it was like it was just over twenty six thousand dollars in invoices and it's just like it's so frustrating having to wait it's like hold on you I didn't take 60 days to deliver your load. You shouldn't take 60 days to pay me on them. Okay, can we at least have that agreement? And it's like, so it was super, super frustrating that they took so long, but that's a perfect example of what happens when you don't factor a load. And it's like, my question would be like, well, what's better? two in the hand or wait one in the hand or two in the bush and it's like I would much rather have that money on my account okay uh, and I could reinvest in the business pay my employees or whatever the case may be have it set aside as a reserve fund whatever it may be I would rather have that money on my account instead of have it be in limbo waiting to get paid on right and so that's why I am an adamant supporter of factoring companies and so I really really hope you guys can understand me uh, like or I hope you can understand why they are important in the trucking business. Now, when you grow your company, eventually you can start to transition, get more direct customers that pay direct, stuff like that. You can figure that out for yourself. So moving on then, what is a good company and what's a bad company, right? Why do some YouTubers recommend one company and some recommend the other? It's like, is that not, like, is there really no good companies? So here's what I can say. Every single factoring company, you better read their contract, their agreement, right? That's you are signing that document and whatever it contains, that is what they're gonna hold you in court towards. So that's number one, so read whatever it says. The second thing is every single factory company offers a referral bonus, okay? And uh, I've been putting my factoring company in my description, you know what I mean, it's no secret. Like it, I, I, I get a referral from it as well. So you get a small little referral for everything. Some of the problems though that you can encounter is some factoring companies have higher fees. Some charge 3%, some charge two, some don't have an app, some do, some don't offer something, you know. So really, you just gotta weigh out what's important to you. Now, I use RTS and they've been very, very good so far. I haven't had any problems with their apps. I haven't had any problems with their fuel card. Like overall, the guys over there are really awesome. Um, like I, I have no complaints about RTS. The only thing is there is a $5,000 early termination fee, right? So they, you sign a one-year contract and if you cancel in that contract, earlier uh, or you cancel before your year is up then there's a five thousand dollar termination fee now i i get that why there's a fee because they give all of their uh, or like potential up front or they give all of their incentives up front to make their money back down the road right and so that's why they have to have that fee in there um but that's just one of those things that you want to pay attention some companies might have and um they might have a, a like a month to month contract and you're like oh yeah nice i'll do month to month because this way i can't cancel but they're going to tell you oh you got to give us a six month heads up before you can quit and it's like well then is that really a month-to-month -month contract i don't think so so really guys the important part about the uh about factoring companies is just just read the double check the contract and 
I would highly recommend go with one of the big players. And the reason I say that is because only the big companies have enough money coming in from factoring from their fuel cards that they can reinvest into websites. And the last thing you want to do is sign up with a company that has a bad website and then you can't get factored or you can't submit invoices or they're too picky saying the pictures are incorrect. So that, that, that just holds up your money even more. And honestly, with RTS, I've had very, very few problems. So if you want to use my link in the description, you can. Those are some of the pros and cons of it, um, but you don't have to, right? You, you could you go to RTS, sign up, and don't even say my name. You'll get the same thing. There's no, there's no advantage or disadvantage to using my link. It just gives me a couple of bucks. That's all it is. So, um, so yeah, check that out. But that's going to do it for this video. Let me know, you guys, in the comments down below. When I do thorough breakdowns about the trucking business like this, do you guys like them? What do you want me to cover specifically? What kind of questions do you have? And then I will see you in the next one. Bye.